Hello. Hi. How are you, everybody? Oh, we're started. We've started and we're live. Um, I want to welcome everyone tonight. Tonight's conversation is uh, going to be a work in progress. It's something that um, I believe is on, on most people's minds. It might be a question that people haven't even articulated as of yet, but are clearly seeing the signs, so to speak. Oh, yeah. All coming, over the place. Coming through thick and fast. What we want to speak about tonight, by my roommate Ragmov, or Lauren Tadjoff, um, we are Chazak. We're at the Safra Synagogue on the Upper East Side. Changed venue, by the usual. We're upstairs, yeah. but there's a, uh, an there's event an going There's an Arayat going upstairs. So we are down the in, the, so in the basement here. Right, we're down in the basement. We're gonna have, we have a class here later that's happening um, for young professionals. But the question that we want to try to explore tonight is, what are the um, impacts of AI implications going to have on uh, Judaism, Jewish life, um, here and around the, and around the world? Um, you may have uh, seen or spent some time, and if you haven't, you sh totally should, seen uh, Open AI um, or uh, uh, DALL-E -E or some of these... Uh, Chat GPT. Or Chat GPT or all of these new um, AI uh, programs that are open where you can literally ask it to write anything for you from poetry to resumes to advice. Exam results. Um, I actually just left it you sent me today. Yeah. Even SAT examinations, teacher and students can input their information. We've got to a point, and this is just like in better right now, it's just starting off, but there's a massive, massive um, new field that's, it's been around for a long time actually, but now it's been kind of like given to the public to see how it goes and where it goes. And it is just, uh, it's blown up over the past couple of months, I think. Yeah, last couple of months, and by the way, this technology is not like other technologies. Like when we got the internet, okay, the internet got somewhat faster over time. We moved away from dial-up. We eventually got to, uh, you know, uh, you went from 56K to 128K. Remember dial-up? Yeah, remember the dial-up. And then you got like low, you got cable, then you have DSL, and now you have like super fast fiber optic and whatnot. You have satellite. I miss the uh, AOL CDs in my mailbox. You know, no, I, I used to love that. those. I, that. I, knew, I knew that those things were going to be like a obsolete trend, absolute a, trend that's going to be phased out 100%. Uh, now we have a, um, this technology is different because it's open source, Yeah. because it's a self-learning program, which means that it is learning. But every time we are using that information, it is remembering, it is learning, it's creating its own neural networks. It's going to get faster and faster in time. And as computers get faster, these artificial bots, okay, are going to get faster. It's not only that, it's not only the speed of it. It's, and the amount of information it's sifting through incredibly fast, it's how our lives are gonna change because of it. And I mean, that's gonna be part of the discussion, something where, I mean, I've been thinking about and Rami Rubin's been thinking about as well, because it's gonna become active and live and it's gonna end up directly influencing and impacting our physical lives. So let's talk about that. How does that, how do you foresee this, um, you know, I guess unraveling so to speak. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's so much here. I've got so much to say on this. First of all, I'm a little nervous. Okay, why? There's a little pacha, a little fear that comes with this when we kind of like unleash and unlock this technology, which isn't just a source of information, which the internet basically is, which itself is very scary and very abusable, like we see in terms of bullying and interactions on a negative, obviously there's positives too. But artificial intelligence, AI, suddenly we've entered a whole new realm. We are now in a, in a, in a possible world where, I mean, I don't like to use the word robots, right? Because that has certain connotations. Uh, unless you're South African, then it means a traffic light. But suddenly it ends up harnessing and accessing your life in a very, very real way. Um, I mean, just look at Chat GDP. This, if you haven't seen it, it's worth having a look and and and, and OpenAI.com and go over to Chat GDP. Uh, so when we we were playing around with it today, Ruben was typing in stuff, and I'd done it in the past, and the answers were good, and then suddenly they weren't so good. You know, I typed in, you know, what's the future for the Jewish world, anti-Semitism in Israel and in America, and suddenly reached a world where you're having one source 
tell you the answer. Right now, you type it into Google, you end up with thousands of results, although we probably look at the first two, three pages, and that's it. But now we're getting to a point where everything is just like there in one place for you to choose, um, for you to see. It's not for you to choose. No, if if that's the whole point. You don't get to choose it. It's kind of like just being thrust upon you, and that's the answer. You know, I, I find it a little disconcerting. Leave aside the fact that every government in the world right now oh. is working overtime oh, because the first <laughs> government gets it. or agency or company that takes control Game of over. this has control of everything. I mean, and, and more than that, once whoever gets it first, because they had it first, their AI will be always ahead of the curve and you, can't, you can never catch up. So Who's right now in Russia, without a doubt, there's a lot of people, and I'm assuming a bunch of Jews too, who are working on this on behalf of the government, trying to figure out how best to take advantage and control of artificial uh, intelligence. But let's go to the Jewish angle of this, because there's positives as well as negatives. And one of the positives we spoke about already, and uh, we have this like, um, I'm part of a number of rabbi group chats, but first of all in terms of our lives our homes the information we're getting so on the positive side there's a lot of jewish resources that have not been available to us that will be available to us right a lot of information sure huge a lot of stuff which was imagine having two and a half thousand years of jewish texts at your fingertips at your fingertips right so for example like i um, I went to a, uh, yes, today I did this uh, chat GPT. I said, write an argument based on Ramosha Feinstein's uh, responsa. You saw that? On uh, what the issues or the challenges of using the AI. Going on through. Shabbat. On Shabbat. I just can't spew out like a page yeah. of like different positions and opinions and so on and so forth. It wasn't very. So right now you go to Google, but you still got to sift through and figure out what's going on. Uh-huh. Right? And you're getting a person's opinion. Now it's not a person. Now it's artificial intelligence. And they're telling you that this is the answer. It's kind of like not up for debate anymore. That's the kind of feel I have with it. Again, that's just my fear aspect. But, but that's, ter- not, that's not, what's your concern? What's your concern? Like, okay, like, fine, you know, like I hear that, there's gonna be one piece of information that people are gonna get, like, so what? We know it's gonna be Jewish biased, le- we know it's Jewish once. learning is based upon discussion, debate, understanding. It's a live thing, it's organic, it's real. It never was just books on a shelf that you kind of dust off and just look up the answer and that's the end of it. There's, there's a real interaction. I mean, this goes further. Judaism goes into the medical field too. You're assuming that the AI that we have right now will be the same AI we have in the future. It's possible oh, it's that the AI much more in the future will have no problem saying, you know what, here are four different opinions mm-hmm. as how to understand this But there are subject. no four opinions. There's hundreds of opinions. Okay, so I mean, it'll, at or, or it'll we... distill it and say we could, we could go ahead and based on the thousands of opinions out there, these are the four main arguments. It's going to get there. Like we're not there yet, but I, I'm not concerned about the information. I mean, it's coming down. It's coming down. The, In the next year is coming AI, down. Oh, for sure. And, and, and by the way, any company that has AI, anyone who wants to make money, figure out a way of attaching AI to it, and you're going to make money. All right. You know what the biggest AI company in the world is? Don't tell us. Let me answer that. You mean Tesla? Tesla, Tesla believe it or not, Tesla is yeah. more than a car company. It's an AI company. Oh yeah. I mean, that's what Tesla, Primal is. Primal Google, is, a, is an Google. information company. Tesla, which happens to have a car. Tesla, Google, um, um, uh, Microsoft, and Apple, right, and Facebook are the biggest AI companies in the United States. I mean, States. right now I'm using I, you know, do a lot of driving. I have a Tesla, and uh, I've got it at a great price, by the way. And um, you know, it's there's an artificial intelligence. You just check, check, and it goes by itself. And I'm, I'm kind of half checked out. I'll be honest with you. You know, it's kind of like I'm leaving my life to this vehicle driving, you know, 50, 60 miles an hour and uh, hoping that it stays true to its mission. Wow. You know, that's... But tell me, is it possible? Can someone hack into that at some point? Yeah. Hack into one car, For into sure. a thousand cars, a- into all AI, the cars AI. and push them into a, 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 another car or a, or a bridge? Who knows? For sure. Because AI. right now I'm putting all my trust into AI. But just one little bit of, you know, I mean, is it possible that the Russians could hack this whole system? And throw every you know Tesla off the road into a ditch. I mean, it can't be that far off, can it? I don't Assuming even... that AI gets gets the right information at the end, right? How is AI different than Nebuah? Oh my God! 
Meaning how Nebuah is, is us, different. prophecy is us, you know, having this connection to this other realm, <laughs> pulling down information that we don't yeah. necessarily have access to. Yeah. And it takes, pro it's a process of getting yourself to the right state, preparing for the information, receiving the information, uh, you know, untangling the information and so on and so forth. Yeah. But isn't, that, isn't there some similarity there that now you have this, this this higher intellect. Well, the thing about the thing about Navua is it's forward focused. The idea of prophecy was always that it's gonna it's gonna predict future accurately. No, the Navua is not only about the future. Why not? What about Navua about halacha? Um, is that Navua? In, the, in the, terms of the question is that when you look at the if you look at you know Nebuah, no we say we say no no we say love shemaim he. We say it's not a Shemaim. We decide halacha down here, no, and the rabbis make decisions that's on That's true when it comes to Torah Shabbat Peh, but now when it comes to Torah Shabbat Peh. So, for example, when um, and the Navi'im, what do we need the Navi for if we have the Chumash? The Navi is there to give us guidance based on predictive qualities of the future. When if there was, you don't do when, this, this is going to occur. If you do Teshuvah, yes, part of this a, will disappear. Part of a Navi's job is to go ahead and do Tuchacha, to give rebuke and so on and so forth. Yeah, and his main but job. But in addition to that, it was also to clarify halacha. Meaning, if there was a halakha that was given in the Torah itself, and for whatever reason it needed clarification, the Navi would come and okay. give the clarification to the halakha as well. It's okay, but that takes, that is a, okay, that's very, very complex. Listen, there's something in the Gemara called Teiku, Tishbi Yataritz Kushat Ubiot. That means Eliyahu, that Eliyahu Navi is going to come and answer all of our questions because there's a lack of decision making, even in the Gemara, on um, certain aspects of halakha. There's no doubt about it. But we say the Shiva Panim the Torah, there's always different opinions. So you think artificial intelligence can end up filling that gap? Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying it will. I'm saying that in the same way that we had access to information in the past from even, let's say, let's say even like Avodah Zara, even like doing idol worship, yeah. you got an answer. You did get an answer. You know what I'm saying? You got an answer and it came from a negative source. You didn't use the right channels, but you got, this is a, this is a, this AI stuff is like, to me like Kohota Tuma, Kohota Tahara, these accessing information very quickly from other places, you're pulling it down, and now you're using it for whatever, however you're using it. And now- I, I never saw you taking this direction, this conversation. I'm trying to make it interesting. Wow, not very interesting. I just, that's- And, and I would say- more I'm hearing, interesting. I've never even thought of this before. Well, that's why you're here. <laughs> so uh, we're, trying, we're trying to, uh, trying to just to try to think differently. I, I don't know, I'm just try, I don't know, meaning like- Is there, let me ask you this, is there, a look at the, is there a predictive quality when it comes to AI? Of course there is. AI bots today are, um, are making all kinds of decisions when it comes to buying and selling stocks. They're telling you about you know, news and what news you want to read. There's definitely a predictive nature to it. It's not as predictive like a Navi. It's going to forecast and will tell you that. I mean, what's in between that and some stockbroker saying, yeah, by the way, Apple's going to go up and Tesla's going down. What's in between the, that The difference that? Is, is that a, uh, well, a, a good stock, you're right, a, stock, a random stockbroker, you're right. You know, I, I think there's nothing special there, but I would say like a, an educated stockbroker is, is, making educated, is making educated guesses. It's not just I'm going with his gut. He's saying, okay, based on the numbers, statistically speaking, in the last hundred years, this stock, based on what it's selling and where the trends are, it should be higher. And the difference is that a uh, AI is using thousand more inputs, no emotion to come to that conclusion. But the point that I'm making is that it can make predictive uh, uh, um, decision making yeah. and uh, correct. Okay, it, it has well the be. ability. It how has about our ability. lives? How about the how about the Jewish home? That's what I was thinking about when we when we decided on this topic. What's going to happen to our homes? Just in terms of, I mean, it's already happening. But in terms of ourselves and, uh, and living in our physical homes that suddenly everything's going to be, um, you know, I mean, there's, there's great benefits to this in terms of uh, knowing where you are and, and the temperature you like and turning stuff on and turning stuff off. I mean, that's definitely part of this whole conversation, right? 100%. You know, <laughs> in terms of Shabbat Chagim, I mean, these are, these are going to be questions that the Rambam is going to have to, the Poskim are going to have to really deal with this, uh, this stuff because once it comes down the pipeline, our entire lives are going to be completely different. You know? 100%. So, I mean, we're not going to be driving anymore. We're going to be taking places. There'll be people saying, well, you know, it's, the car's going there anyway. Just jump in. Have you, have you ever read Moonwalking with Einstein? I haven't. No. So Moonwalking with Einstein was a book written by Josh Fuhrer, or Foyer, I forget his last name. He was a Jewish kid who yeah, worked yeah. for the New York Times. I know he is. And he was, uh, he was put on assignment to, um, to uh, do a, some reporting on a memory contest that was happening in New York. 
Okay. And um, he was meeting with all these, you know, memory champions who remembered all sorts of things. And, um, you know, one of these champions tells him, you know, you could, be, you could probably win. I could teach you how to do it. He's like, I don't have, a good, I don't have that kind of memory. He's like, no, you have an average IQ. He's like, if you put some work and effort into it, you too can learn my technique and you can become a memory champion. The whole book is about the process of him undergoing, spending time learning how to memorize lots of information very quickly and so on and so forth. That's okay. what the book is about. But there's one quote in there that he, uh, he quotes um, um, from an old Egyptian source where it was a, uh, Egyptian, an Egyptian god comes to the pharaoh, I forget which god it was, and says to him, you know, I have a new technology, a new gift that I want to give to you and the people. Yeah. He's like, what is it? He's like, it's something called writing. <laughs> right, and with this, you could, you'll remember everything. You'll write it down, and you'll remember everything. Okay. And you'll never forget. And the pharaoh says, this is, this is not a tool for remembering, this is a tool for forgetfulness. This is not a tool to remember? It's a tool this for tool forgetfulness. Because people don't need to remember anymore, yeah, so write it down. Write it down. Right, and I and I love that little wow. that little piece. So you of, want to say I'm just going to jump to the next stage uh, that this is going to become the dumbification because it's going to take care of everything for us. On one hand, yes, but on the other hand, you and I both agree that writing is essential to the development of humanity. Okay, and so are computers at this point. What, so my point is that like like all technology, it all has to do with how it's going to be used, and I think the thing that we as a as a society need to have a conversation about is the etiquette. Like, what is the proper etiquette that we're creating to use this tool? Like, there's no boundaries, my phone is always on, you know, like, is there a time where... Like, with, with writing, we see it. There's, you have become, to learn... It's going to become a... We have become, and this is going to become much more so of the year or so, augmented beings. Yeah. Right? Everything is augmented. I'm just... I'm just cause this is, you know... With two rabbis, we're taking the Jewish angle over here. I'm sure there's like medical stuff to this as well. For sure. You know, when AI end up going into our bloodstreams and figuring stuff out from inside out, whatever, yeah. which itself is, you know, in terms of tracking, also makes me very, very nervous. My wife, as you know, is a big conspiracy theorist. She's convinced that everyone is constantly tracking us all the time, or specifically. Yeah, I'm sure they are, but that's not the point. The point is, I would want to have a lots of data. The more data I have. Yeah, but do you want that data about yourself shared throughout the entire it's, world? It's, it, you know, what? it's irrelevant. You can't hide it. You think that you're. You think that the AI can't get the data in the doctor's office? You think like we're at a point where it just doesn't really matter anymore. So you know, to to not you take advantage of it, I think is kind of silly. Because you don't fully appreciate how advanced these technologies are. So you're saying are. it's there, it's there, and that's the just end of it. You just gotta just use it. Just use learn it. how to handle I, I it. Never, how to I never did, like, I never, I was super against doing, like, the 23andMe, the DNA testing. Because <laughs> of it. But today. And then you did. I did it, but because you know why I did it? Because there's, you can't escape it. Your DNA is everywhere. If, they, if someone wants to get your DNA, they'll get it. It's impossible to shield your DNA. You know, like, people will find it in a small hair in your brush, in that little nail that you left behind <laughs> in the bathroom somewhere. People will get it. You can't escape it. So once it's there, it's better to flood the system. It's all going to be in the system My right now. wife tried her very, very best and did very well at removing every reference to herself on the internet. It's very, very hard to find any information on my wife. Really? Yeah. Oh, she, my, my, my. All from the beginning. AI can reconstruct my life. I really did. <laughs> Between we typed Facebook. This about my, I typed into the opening AI chat and actually I posted on my Instagram, like, you know, Rabbi Hajjoff's teaching methods, and it came up with a pretty accurate description of what I do. Really? Like that, within two seconds, you know? What are the implications? But is that like a general, like almost like, like Myers-Briggs? Like, there's 16 personality types, you said the word rabbi, and therefore we're going to fit you into these, and therefore it's could very be. similar, like a zodiac almost, but not could necessarily be. an accurate, accurate, you know, description of... Uh, it could have been a general description that just came mm -hmm. up, that it kind of just like guessed. Yeah, it could have been. It may apply to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm buying that. Once again, though, the Jewish home, how's it going to change? What's going to happen? You're going to walk in, lights come on, lights go off. You have Shabbat, you have Jewish holiday. I'm just thinking in terms of just living a, a Jewish life in terms of your being is going to be completely different. Yeah, you're going to have to choose to uh, be more machmir and not use it on Shabbat. You can't opt out. Of course you can. There'll be no opting you out. You can go ahead the right same now, way. Right now you turn off the computer, you turn off your phone, you're yeah, done. No, but let's say, my no. home, you have lights on, you have AC comes on and off, and the phone's away and Shalom is My house is automated by AI. It's, it, it's going to be cable cuff lines. Okay, but even if it is, so what? How does that impact me? Like, meaning like, okay, so now that my stove will go off and it'll go back on by itself because it's worried about a fire hazard? Like, that doesn't change my Shabbat. There's, there, there's stuff that we don't even realize is going to change. But like what? Like, meaning like it's going to take my body time? It'll, it'll digest my food faster? Yeah. Like, but what's it going to do for me already? That like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the tech, that right now, let's just go where we are right now. Right now, the next one or two years, it's not going to change our lives by much. I don't think you're what right. It will, I'll tell I think you in what, the next year or two, it is going to change your life tremendously. Not on Shabbat. 
Think about what has to happen in order to change your life on Shabbat in your home. You have to get new hardware installed into your home. Your house right now is analog, it's not digital. Right. So you have to get everything digital. That means you have to get new light switches, new wires, you have to get new light bulbs, you gotta get new stoves, new ovens, new no, I disagree. I think new it's gonna dishwashers. Be, it's everything. gonna be able to access no. things for you Someone immediately. We used to build computers and understand how technology works. There has to be a relay system. So my, my stove, I have a Viking oven, it's gas, there's nothing electric on it. There's nothing that the AI can do to my stove, unless there's a robot that comes to my house and turns it on, AI can't do nothing with my stove. Okay, my Viking refrigerator, it does not have internet. There's no way AI can get into my refrigerator because it's off the grid. It's in a closed You know, system. I thought the same thing. And then you hear stories about people's little uh, baby monitors, people hacking. Yeah, no, that's different. That's them. because Baby monitors are actually on the internet, and there's an IP address there that they. There's an IP address. But on there's the, no, there's no IP address in a refrigerator. Currently or there isn't. In a, currently there isn't. In a, in a, in a, there are new ones. 100. There are new stoves, be. new refrigerators. Yeah. They have all those things. 100. Refrigerator tell you when you're when yeah. empty on food, yeah, go buy it. My point is, my, my point is, we're just not there right now. We're not there. We're 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 like five years away from that. I think that level of like AI. But I think as far as I think so, the main thing which you're all concerned about though is the what well, I'm concerned about is the intrusion of privacy on, which you're like done with it anyway. you gave up on that yeah there's no privacy there's no privacy anymore there's no privacy you, you, it's an illusion if you think you have privacy you don't have privacy unless you could afford and even if you have an island today you have a satellites in space that can listen in on uh, you whispering in your bedroom to your wife in the middle of the night and, and have an audible conversation hear it like, like as if you're in the How about this there's no the way rabbis to... become obsolete I'm using rabbis as rabbis, but I mean teachers and professors. Because right now we know that they're having a problem with it. I don't give essays, but I teach, you know, I teach university, I teach three courses, I'm full-time faculty. I don't give essays anymore. I never did, by the way, because maybe the first, second year, maybe, you know, when I started 20 years ago, because people just like copy and paste off the internet. So how would you test? I test as they sit down with a pen and paper, and mm -hmm. make them sit down and answer the questions with their hand. That is what I do. How about if there's no other way? And could they cheat even with that? Absolutely, you know? But I, that's the only way I can do it. See, I, I don't give essays anymore, what's the point? I, I think that what we should be doing is, in schools today, we should be teaching kids how to use AI to be better writers, to use the creativity to, as a tool. It does the to writing become, for you. I, so let's just teach them how to use it. It's not 100%, you know that you can't submit it as is. Not uh, but, getting there, my friend. Okay, but we're not there yet. In the, in the interim, I think that it's our responsibility to teach them how we use it responsibly. You know, uh, that's going to be the, uh, I think, the, uh, the go-to. Go-to. Because otherwise, you don't need the university. Like, what do you need school anymore today? Like, you I mean, you saw what it, that video sent me today. It's terrible. Within the next few years, yeah. half the university is going to just disappear. Yeah. There will be no need for them. I wish there was a way of shorting it's Definitely humanities. If I could short universities, I totally would. I make a lot of money shorting. There's no stocks there, but if there was, you could make a killing. Short the universities. Obviously, some things will still need to be there in terms of understandings mm -hmm. and, 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 and trades. Everything, everything is moving online. Every, I mean, it's every, you just don't need the same thing anymore. You just don't need it. How anymore. about yeshivot? I think yeshivot still have a function and a value because yeshivot are not just there to teach. Um, they're, you know, that, they're, they're there to, to teach you morality and right. they're there to teach you other kinds so of things. So, very, very good. That's what we never touched so far. There's a whole morality, there's an ethics issue, yeah. right? And AI, can you train an AI in ethics? Well, let's, let's, in let's other see. words, that's going to be a big, you big use, question. You use Can you imagine a world? Like a, imagine a world where you tap into AI. This person's guilty. Did they get the death penalty or not? Right? I mean, if you get to a point where that happens, right, how are we going to be able to uh, figure that out? You know, are we going to give AI the power to make such decisions and such functioning in terms of life and death decisions of someone lying in a hospital on a respirator? And there's a limited amount of resources. And now this one person needs it, but maybe the younger person over here. I mean, your car does it. All right? Built the test information is there's two choices of hitting someone old, someone young, animal. It has to make a decision based upon, you know, yeah. in, a, in a scary scenario. Mm -hmm. So we have the same problem now or same challenge when it comes to ethical, moral decisions. The AI is going to have the decision making over. Yeah, it will. But in that process of handing it over, what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up having, you're going to save many more lives. At the cost to what? The cost of, of older people. I don't know how of a person who's on a ventilator. No, that, and we now we know that, exactly how many people need ventilators, and we'll unplug those five people listen, in order to I put think young right people now, on. Right now, I think the way the system is set up is that it's there to protect the driver, which is interesting. Yeah. Because that means the pedestrian is a, a secondary. Fine. So now we've got not got pedestrians. Now we've got people on life support machines. Yeah. 
No, you're right. I, you're and right. AI is going to be making moral, that's my problem, moral and ethical decisions. If AI, that's the realm it, of free uh, let will. Me, let, me say, let me say it like this, okay? If AI actually is able to bring, deliver what we want it to deliver, right? Something called the singularity. Yeah. Singularity is a uh, philosophical state where computers are embedded into everything. Uh, everything. Even my thoughts. My thoughts can define, can make, create reality. Okay? That's what the singularity means. And if in that world of singularity, you and I will be living in a world where anything we imagine can be possible. I want to just tag on to that. And that, to we, me, we, sounds we, like you want a Mashiach. We exa I was exactly about to say that. I was about to say that this has messianic repercussions. Right. Because we see Mashiach at a time when there's going to be absolute information, knowledge will be widespread. Right. The desire for wrong will disappear. How that's going to work, again, we have to, you have to wait and see. But in terms of our own um, concept of Mashiach coming and bringing world peace, because that's the main thrust of Mashiach coming, I think A is going to have a major part impact of it. Yeah. on that. I'm sure it's part, I'm sure it's part I, 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 it seems like it's part of the uh, well, process. 100% But But um, you know, where it goes, what happens at the end of it, I have no, I have no idea what it looks like, but you know, maybe we could spend some time talking about... Um, I've got a feeling we're going to do this again in a couple of months, the same topic, and it's going to be a complete different conversation, because things yeah. will advance a lot more. Okay, let's see. Okay. Anyway, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks, and, everyone. Uh, stay tuned. Hopefully, uh, next. Uh, what are we doing next? Next time I'm here. Next time he's here, just in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much for listening, and stay tuned for. Take care, everyone. If you have any questions, send them the comment or uh, send us a message, and we'll try to get back to you. Thank you so much Thank for listening. Thank you so much.